The president and his Republican allies have bought into a ludicrous conspiracy theory claiming it was Ukraine that interfered in the 2016 election. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. <laughs> Among the many qualifications you'd expect a person to have in order to become president of the United States, one of them would be an ability to function in the morning. That is not the case with Donald Trump. I mean, look at him. I mean, that is how a cat reacts when you try to move them off your bed. All right, you know, fine, just stay there. In fact, one small detail we learned from last week's impeachment hearings was that Trump hates mornings. You might remember that an embassy staffer, David Holmes, testified that he overheard a call between Trump and his hand-picked ambassador to the EU, Gordon Sondland, in which they discussed their scheme to orchestrate a quid pro quo with Ukraine. Holmes said he could hear Trump screaming on the other end of the call and then added this. After the call ended, Ambassador Sondland remarked that the president was in a bad mood. As Ambassador Sondland stated, it was often the case early in the morning. First of all, it doesn't surprise me that Trump is in a bad mood early in the morning. Look at what he eats. He has the diet of a 16-year-old stoner. <laughs> when you have that much fried food sloshing around in your digestive tract, you're not going to sleep well. That's why Trump always looks like he just woke up screaming in the middle of a nightmare where he's being chased by a giant drumstick with the head of Adam Schiff. <laughs> So the impeachment hearings established not only that Trump orchestrated a criminal conspiracy to extort a foreign country to interfere in the 2020 election using hundreds of millions of dollars in taxpayer money, they also established that Trump hates mornings. And we saw Trump's irritability on full display Friday when he woke up bright and early and called in for a video conference with his therapist, the host of Fox and Friends. Now, <laughs> this interview lasted for a total of 53 minutes. And here's a little time lapse just to give you a taste of how long and how insane it was. Mr. Trump, good morning, good morning. to you. Good morning. Good to have you on Fox and Friends today. Uh, as you said in your tweet, another slow news week. I see these hearings. Well, we have a great day. And then you pick up the phony New York Times, which is a total phony paper. I don't read it anymore. You can't read it. I have really good hearing. And I've been watching guys for 40 years make phone calls. Right. And I can't hear. When you're, and you could be two feet away, I can't hear. Why aren't all those countries in Europe, why aren't they paying? Why is it always the United States, the sucker? I got elected on that. You know, because we're like a gravy train for them, okay? We're like their gravy train. So one other works. thing before we get off the Republican no, Party. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, I know. We can keep this going all day, right? It's easy. Because if you have a bulldozer right. or if you have heavy blowtorches and things, you know, you can break through. I love your show. Thank you, you so much, Mr. President, for being with us. Yep. President Trump, thank you thanks much. so much. Thank you. All right. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> well, we just went 57 minutes without having a sip of water. Right, I know. Water? After that, I would have reached for the vodka. <laughs> I mean, those guys barely said a word. How would Trump even know... He was actually talking to anyone. At some point, they should just disconnect his phone and let him think he's on TV. I love your show. You people are great. Oh, what's that, Steve? <laughs> That's a great point, Steve. <laughs> this interview is still a revealing glimpse into the madness that has taken hold of the Republican Party and the right-wing media apparatus that supports it. For example, when the last impeachment hearing ended on Thursday, the Democratic chairman, Adam Schiff, ended it with a closing argument that summarized the evidence. This president believes he is above the law, beyond accountability. And in my view, there is nothing more dangerous than an unethical president who believes they are above the law. And I would just say to people watching here at home and around the world, in the words of my great colleague, we are better than that. Adjourned. Wow, that's a stirring defense of democracy that neatly summarized the president's various abuses of power. And now, Mr. President, your rebuttal. Adam Schiff is a sick puppy. Let me tell you, he's a sick puppy. He's so sick. Now, Schiff, remember this. He makes it all up. He's sick. There's something wrong with him. There's something wrong with him? You just spent an hour screaming into a telephone. <laughs> You're not a president. You have the anger and free time of a sports radio caller. I call it the failing New York Times, and let me tell you another thing. The Mets suck. <laughs> I really think contrast is worth noting and sums things up perfectly. On one hand, you have a calm, measured, fact-based defense of democracy and the rule of law. From one side, that whatever their faults as politicians inhabits our actual reality. On the other hand, you have a red-faced lunatic screaming at three terrified captives <laughs> trapped on a TV set like they're in a Saw movie. I mean, look at them. <laughs> 
It looked like three out-of-town tourists sitting on the subway who just saw a roach smoking a cigarette. <laughs> and by the way, I'm pretty sure the roach was smoking the cigarette because he just heard Trump's interview. <laughs> this Trump guy's out of his goddamn mind. <laughs> but now, we've seen two weeks of conclusive evidence in public impeachment hearings with one witness after another testifying definitively that there was, in fact, a corrupt quid pro quo. Congress is likely to move on to the next phase, passing articles of impeachment in the House and starting a trial in the Senate. So, in the Fox & Friends interview, Trump gave us a preview of one of his lines of defense, a line Republicans have unsuccessfully repeated for weeks. Trump said he was just concerned about corruption in Ukraine in general, not the Biden specifically. We're looking for corruption. This tremendous corruption. We're looking for why should we be giving hundreds of millions of dollars to countries when there's this kind of corruption? Mr. President, a, a, a anyway, couple of days ahead. ago, uh, your ambassador to the United uh, to the EU, uh, Mr. Sundland, in his opening statement, said that there was quid pro quo. There was quid pro quo. He said because uh, you wanted an investigation into corruption in exchange for a visit to the White House or something like that. Yeah, well, that's total nonsense. I do want always corruption. Uh, I don't think that's what you meant. Also, what's with the insane syntax? I do want always corruption? That sounds like something a gangster would say in an off-brand version of Grand Theft Auto. I do want always corruption. Car stealing is your next mission. This is obviously a ridiculous lie that is contradicted by literally all of the evidence. Trump has no defense, so all he can do is smear the witnesses with lies and conspiracy theories. Take, for example, the former ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Ivanovich, who gave her moving testimony about the smear campaign against her. Ivanovich is a career foreign service officer who has served Republican presidents, and yet Trump concocted a ridiculous lie about her. I don't even know these people. You know, I come to Washington, so you've had Bush and you have never Trumpers. And I come in and I end up with thousands of people that are never Trumpers, right. Clinton people, and sometimes the never Trumpers are worse than Clinton and Obama people, believe me. But this ambassador that you know everybody says is so wonderful, she wouldn't hang my picture in the embassy, okay? She's in charge of the embassy. She wouldn't hang it. It took like a year and a half or two years for her to get the picture up. She said bad things about me, didn't want to hang my picture in the embassy. It's mm -hmm. standard as you put the president of the United States picture in an embassy. None of that is true. The embassy in Kyiv hung the official photographs of the president, vice president, and secretary of state as soon as they arrived from Washington, D.C., and a former embassy official in London tweeted, it took the White House almost 15 months to get official photos sent to embassies to hang, and we're instructed not to print other photos. And I understand why the White House would prevent embassies from printing other photos, because then you could pick whichever one you want, like this one, or, you know, like this one, <laughs> or my personal favorite, you know, this one. I mean... <laughs> In a way, that one looks like an actual work of art. That should be hanging in the Salvador Dali Museum under the title Melting Criminal. <laughs> so, it was not, in any way, shape, or form, it was not Yovanovitch's fault the pictures were delayed. It was the White House's fault. And if you're wondering why it would take the White House 15 months to send photos, maybe it was because the guy in charge was on the <laughs> phone for an hour. <laughs> but this is the paranoid alternate reality Trump and his Fox News allies live in. Anyone who disagrees with his criminal behavior is a spy or a traitor or a so-called never-Trumper. Trump has used that phrase repeatedly, even described a Russia advisor to Vice President Mike Pence, who testified last week. The advisor, Jennifer Williams, was asked about that accusation during her hearing. Ms. Williams, are you a never-Trumper? I'm not sure I know an official definition of a never-Trumper. Yeah, no one knows what it means because it's a dumb, made-up term. It sounds... <laughs> like a fictional animal from A Wrinkle in Time. There were fur pigs and griffin doodles and never Trumpers. <laughs> this is the paranoid alternate universe Trump and his allies on Fox News inhabit and reinforce for their audience. Everyone who's against them is a spy and a traitor. Even Gordon Sondland, the ambassador who testified last week, is supposedly a secret member of the deep state now. This guy donated $1 million to Trump's inaugural committee. $1 million, and yet over the weekend, Fox host Janine Pirro said Sondland was out to get Trump. His testimony is not only canceled by the facts, but by his demeanor, his arrogance, and his inappropriate smirking, making it clear that he, like many deep state bureaucrats, is not a fan of the president. He's a deep state bureaucrat? 
He's a businessman who gave the president's inaugural committee $1 million, and then Trump appointed him. If he's a deep state bureaucrat, then everyone is. Jadine Pirro probably says the same thing about her own reflection in the mirror. Who are you, and why are you copying my movements? You're a part of the deep state. Don't point at me. The Republican Party of Donald Trump is a movement consumed by paranoia, peering around every corner, looking for spies and saboteurs, indulging and disseminating absurd conspiracy theories. For example, Trump's been peddling an unhinged and completely debunked conspiracy theory that it was actually Ukraine and not Russia that interfered in the 2016 election. Trump repeated that insane claim again during his interview Friday, and even the Fox and Friends, the show that is more pro-Trump than virtually any other show on TV, tried to gently push back. It's very interesting. They have the server, right, from the DNC, Democratic National Committee. Who has the server? Now, the FBI went in and they told him, get out of here, you're not kidding, we're not giving it to you. They gave the server to CrowdStrike or whatever it's called, which is a country, which is a company owned by a very wealthy Ukrainian, and I still want to see that server. You know, the FBI has never gotten that server. That's a big part of this whole thing. Why did they give it to a Ukrainian company? Why? Are you sure they did that? Are you sure they gave it to Ukraine? No, well, that's what the word is. Oh, is that what the word is? Do you spend a lot of time hanging out on street corners getting the latest scoop? Seriously, who do you even talk to anyway? You spend most of your time wandering around in circles on the White House lawn by yourself. He's probably out there hoping to find the server. CrowdStrike, where are you, CrowdStrike? Second, you know it's bad when even Fox and Friends is questioning Trump. That would be like E putting up a disclaimer during the Kardashians that said, this is all scripted, none of this is real. <laughs> Yet Trump's allies on Fox and the Republican Party have actually been repeating this nonsense, even though his own former national security official Fiona Hill debunked it during the impeachment testimony, and in an interview, Trump's former Homeland Security Advisor Tom Bossert also said it had been debunked, and yet on Sunday, GOP Senator John Kennedy repeated it anyway. Senator Kennedy, who do you believe was responsible for hacking the DNC and Clinton campaign computers, their emails? Was it Russia or Ukraine? I don't know, nor do you, nor do any of us. Uh, Miss Hill. Uh, well, is I mean, let me just, let me just interrupt to say the entire intelligence community says it was Russia. Th right, but it could also be Ukraine. No, it can't. <laughs> Literally, everyone who has studied this has said it can't. It was Russia. Could have been Ukraine. Could have been Russia. Could have been a swamp witch and turned me into a senator from a rooster. <laughs> Could have been. And then there's Rudy Giuliani at this very moment is under criminal investigation. In fact, today we learned that subpoenas have been issued seeking information on Giuliani's consulting business as part of a broad federal investigation into possible money laundering, obstruction of justice, and campaign finance violations. Over the weekend, Rudy was asked by Fox News if he was worried about getting indicted, and his reaction was very Rudy-esque. Are you afraid, Mr. Mayor, that you could be indicted? Oh, wow. <laughs> how, how, how long have you known me, Ed? I've known you several years. Uh, you think I'm afraid? I, I don't know. You think I get afraid? Having no fear is a good quality if you're daredevil, but Rudy's like a contestant on that game show, Wipeout, who gives a thumbs up to the camera right before a foam hammer knocks him into the water. <laughs> and I do think you get afraid. I mean, have you looked at yourself? You always look afraid. <laughs> you look like you found out what you did. <laughs> the Republican Party and the right-wing media apparatus that supports it are spreading insane conspiracy theories. Meanwhile, we keep getting more and more evidence against Trump, and every time they go, oh, wow. This has been a closer look.